Hello everyone. Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, my last video I spoke about the sun and how it is that the sun connects with the holiday of Christmas. How it is that ancient cultures and the esoteric elite know the connection of the sun with the Christmas holiday and the reason that it was the motive behind even the invention of the holiday, what is really happening? That is what I shared in that video. And I shared how what is essentially happening is there's a portal that is open during the winter and summer solstice that allows one that knows to have access to a higher amount of energy when that portal opens. It gives them the ability to grab onto that energy in that vortex and pull it over to the earth, bring it down to earth so that they can utilize this energy and manifest their dreams. During these times, whatever it is that a person desires to create in their life, whether they want to establish a business, whether they want to start school, whether they want to make extra money, whether they want to have fame, fortune, Whatever it is that you desire to have, there are times of the year of which the energies that are being allowed access to the earth are more available to you. And so as I shared in that video, many of the holy um, days, especially the winter solstice, December 21st to the 22nd, and then Christmas being established during that time, the reason was that the sun disappeared. And during that time with the sun's disappearance, it allowed the access to the gateway to the other side with energy. And what is happening essentially is that by the average person not knowing over 7 billion people on the planet and only 1% understand this information, the other 7 billion and whatever, those people are using their energy to celebrate, to practice holy days and Sabbaths. They are now giving their energy away by participating in these, in these days without understanding understanding the esoteric strengths behind it. And so what happens is, is that these people, the ones that the know, including the gods of the Bible that establish holy days, these gods are now using the ignorance of the people that worship them to now give them the energies that would be accessible to themselves. This is powerful stuff. This is information that you are not allowed to know so that you remain dependent and ignorant. And this is why certain communities and certain people never rise because you give all of your energy and your power away and you are not privy to any of this, but we remain ignorant. People religiously inclined, your energy is being harvested by the gods. In my book, The Age of I Know, Unmasking the Magicians, this is a game changer. Because what this does is exposes the religion that has existed for thousands of years on the planet. The religion that has abused people, the religions that have taken your energy for thousands of years. This exposes them and unmasks them and explains exactly where they came from, who they are, and the root of all belief. You see, the root of all belief is to control you, to take away your sovereignty so that you can externalize your worship, give it away so that those who have now become predatory on you can now become empowered themselves and stronger. You see, there's a competition in the unseen world which different gods are vying for your worship because the more numbers they get, the stronger they become. The more you honor their commands to celebrate their holy days, the more you now are strengthening their power. And they become the God of Islam, Allah, or Yahweh, and they're battling each other and you don't even see it. They want your numbers. They want, as many, they want you to have as many children as you can have. 
because you will now sacrifice your child through the fire and worshiping these gods that know this information and how to take it, these opportunities away from you so that they can now have access to it and become more powerful. This is a game changer, my book, The Age of I Know Unmasking the Magicians. <laughs> Once you get this, you will be able to see through the schemes to decode what is in your scripture that you've been worshiping the whole time, to understand why certain things were invented, why certain things were commanded for you to participate in, and why it is that your churches are so big, why it is that you go on certain days of the year. These are the reasons. My last video on the sun, the galactic cross, will give you the information pertaining to the energies that you can gain from the sun, that they now take from you, because you do not know the science. This video, I'm going to concentrate on the moon, and how the moon being the feminine of that energy, the sun is the masculine, the moon is the feminine, together, they are the mother and the father, and how it is that the mother can now give you her energies so that you can manifest your dreams. So that you can become a businessman, own your own businesses. All of that is yours. You just have to learn this. So I'm going to zoom in right now and take you through this chart and help you to understand why it is that these were such important days for the different gods and how it should be important to you. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in there. Let me see. Okay, maybe I should go back a bit. Okay, I hope you guys, you can see that. Just as the sun goes through its different courses in the sky, sometimes you see it more, sometimes you don't, and during the winter solstice, as I brought up in my other video, it disappears for three days and then is resurrected again. Just like your New Testament tells you about a Jesus, right? Well, the moon, too, goes through its different phases. And each phase gives you an opportunity to have an understanding and also to empower yourself with the energies that can be evoked from the moon phases. Now, if you say that this is demonic, then obviously the whole world is demonic, including all of the females on the planet. Because during the different moon phases, we are affected as females by the tides of the water and by the moon. The moon affects the tides. We are filled with water. We have our menstrual cycles. And so we will experience certain feelings and emotions through the phases of the sun. So whether we believe this or not, or take advantage of it or not, we are still affected by it. And so it behooves you to understand this so that you can now empower yourself. Why didn't your book explain this to you? Well, I'm going to begin. The moon goes through eight different phases a month. I spoke about the new moon briefly before, but I'm going to speak about the new moon now. What happens during the new moon is there is a conjunction between the moon and the sun, the mother and the father, which means that they are in close proximity to one another. And so what happens because the moon is the feminine and she absorbs the energy from the seed of the light from the sun and she reflects it to her children on the earth, what happens during a new moon is the conjunction brings them together and the father or the sun now blocks the light that the moon would normally bring down to the earth and it blocks it causing like a solar eclipse where it covers the light coming down to the earth from the moon. And so for th almost three days, the moon no longer gives its light on the earth. And so there is darkness on the earth. And so she is not shedding light or light where we can now see because she is being blocked now. This is what we call the blackout phase. Now remember, in my last video, I spoke about the winter solstice and how the sun disappears. Well, so does the moon. 
And the significance of the moon disappearing during this time is the fact that when this moon, when the moon disappears during this time, it is again like the sun, the 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 the, um, the winter solstice. It too is opening up a portal or a door or a vortex so that you can now grab on to the energies that are now accessible to the planet and now bring that energy into your life so that it can actuate your dreams. <laughs> and so now you will take this energy that you have now gained from this vortex, this portal, and you will now sit in meditation, you will write down your intentions, what you want to do. You want to start a career, a business, and this is the time to do it. These are new beginnings, redoing, beginning again. And in fact, in the Hebrew word of the Bible, the word is kodesh, kodesh, which the verb form of Kohadesh is Hadash, which means to rebuild, to renew, to refresh. And so during the new moon phase of the eight phases of the moon, this is the time now for you to redo everything, reinvent yourself, begin again, set your intentions of all that you want to happen to yourself for the month. Everything that you wish to happen, you make it known here. You do your meditation. You speak forth the word to give it life. You write down the word to bring it, to give it life. You are intending for this to happen. And because the energy has been opened up to you, you now have the power to actualize this event of everything you wrote and said. You see, if you had done this on any other day, not the new moon, then the energies would not be consistent. The energies would not contribute to your abilities to manifest your projection of, the new, of you, what you should be doing during the new moon phase. And so these are what the gods, these are what those in the know, the elite, those in occultic groups, they know this. And so they are the ones that are having everything that you wish you had. You covet their life because you have not gained information about this to do what they're doing, gaining the energies during the new moon phase. And so they have parties, they have rituals, they have say whatever it is. They will sit together, bring all their energy together and make this happen because they are informed. They, have, you, they will bring their families into their living room and all of them will intend together. But you, you bring your families into your synagogues, your mosques, and your Sabbaths, and you're giving your energy away. You're giving all of this opportunity to create for yourself, to create community, jobs, and businesses. You're now giving that away in your synagogues and mosques because your God told you to gather on this day. Now we know why. And so this new moon phase, again, is when you will set your intentions for everything you want to create in your life for that month. And as the moon goes around through its different quarter phases, you will now do everything that you can to check on it. See if you are working towards your goal. You reach the crescent phase where you are learning about your goal. And depending on the astrological sign that the new moon is in, that will tell you where your energy shall be concentrated on. And so now everything is working towards this manifestation of this arena of your life. And so as it goes along through the crescent phase, it is reaching the waxing phase, which means because the moon disappeared for almost three days, now you're starting to see it again. And this is why the Jewish people or the people of the Bible, the Old Testament, in Jerusalem, they would blow a shofar when they saw the sliver of the new moon in the sky. So as soon as they saw the piece of the moon coming in the sky, they knew that it was, it was passing, that, that, that they knew the phases that were going on during the new moon. They would know that the moon, new moon is approaching. 
And so they would blow the shofar during that time. And as the moon, new moon begins to build and build and build during its waxing phase, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you begin to see it in the sky more. What does that mean for the intentions that you set during the new moon? Well, that means that all of your intentions that you set, that you spoke out, that you wrote down, they now begin to grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And in fact, they grow so big that they reach the time of the full moon and they become pregnant with all that you put in that work. You see, you set your intentions at the new moon and as the moon begins to wax, you begin to put in all the efforts that would ensure that during the full moon, you would reach your full pregnancy. And so all of the intentions that you set out during the new moon to create your new career, your job, how are you going to make money, how are you going to bring fortune to yourself, whatever it is that is the aspect of whatever astrological sign the moon, new moon is in, you are now renewing and you are building, building, building in your pregnancy, in your intentions, you are doing the work, you are nurturing the womb, you are nurturing all of your goals, and you are working towards it. You are reaping in the full moon what you have sown in the new moon. You reap what you sow. And so now it is time for you to harvest all that it is that you have put into this work. It is time for you to see the benefits and see it implemented into your life and brought down to earth so that now your dreams have come true. And so as we go along from the full moon phase that was planted from the new moon phase, all the hard work, we're waxing, we're waxing, we're waxing, we're full. And then we begin to go through the waning process, but before we do that, we burst. The seeds that we planted in a new moon can now burst and spread itself throughout our lives for the rest of the month. And we now benefit from that bursting, from that labor. And as we go on, the moon begins to wane and it begins to get to again, the moon goes down, it's waning, it becomes in its synodic phase or synodic period, it's called, and it becomes a waning crescent now. Now the crescent is on the opposite side that we saw during the crescent on the waxing phase. And so now this is a time for us to go in again. To so here, we, we are now using what we developed here to benefit everything outside of ourselves. And so now if we've created a job, other people, our children, our family, our communities, now benefit from what we planted here in our new moon phase. So as we're here on this side of our waning phase, it's time for us to examine what it is that we have created during our yang phase. You see, this is the yin, the yin and the yang, just like the masculine and the feminine, the mother and the father, the sun and the moon. Now in our phase where we are waning, we begin to examine what it is that we created during the new moon phase of the waxing to our pregnancy. And so it's, very, it's a very reflective time for us to now look at all that we have done to create. We are creators, and we can become creators and manifestors of our dream if we understand all of this. So these are the eight moon phases. Why is this significant to the God of the Bible? It's because the God of the Bible understood these energies. The God of the Bible understood that if during the new moon phases, all the, the, the people came to the synagogue because during this time, the synagogues were actually open to all of the Israelites. That means all of the Israelites were going in the temples and they are given the, and the synagogues and giving their energy and praying to a God so that they can now give their prayers. They are evoking their energies to this God during this new moon phase. So he can now take this energy and empower himself on the unseen world and gain power over the other gods that are his competitors. Remember, he is a jealous God. 
And so now you religiously have turned this into religion of which you externalize your worship. And now you obey the scriptures of Numbers chapter 28, Numbers chapter 10, Ezekiel chapter 46, of which you were told during the new moon, the moon, new moon phases every month and during the full moons that you shall go to the synagogues or the mosques or the temples and you shall now do your special drink offerings or your burnt offerings or sacrifice to the God of the Bible. And so now he is not only getting your prayers and all of your evocations during this time, but he is also getting your sacrifices. And during the Old Testament, there was a sacrifice of blood because remember, just like these portal energies, blood has energies. So you would now sacrifice animals and spill out the blood so that this God again can gain more energy through the blood because the Bible says the life is in the blood. And so now you will give your sacrifices. And just like you do now, you may not sacrifice your animals, but you are sacrificing your time and your children and all of your energy and giving it and praying to this God that says that he is higher and more powerful than you are. And so now we can see the significance of why the, the moon phases are so important. Why it is that people who are successful in their lives, many of them secretly are in these groups and organizations that teach them this from a very young age. They teach it to their children and thus the wealth. All that they own, all of that they possess, the education stays within their family because they understand how to access these energies which are so powerful. So now we have two different, two different areas of the moon phases. Again, we're dealing with the yin, the yin phase and the, and the yang phase, the left hemisphere of the brain and the right hemisphere of the brain, the masculine and the feminine, the mother and the father. Now they will join together again. They will come together and create through both sides of the crescent of the moon, they will come together and make the moon itself. So now we have just married the masculine and the feminine and the mother and the father and now we understand why the Bible says that the bride and the groom will go into their chamber and they will marry. This is the chamber. This is the new moon of which the solar eclipse marries and conjuncts the moon and the sun together and creates a new moon, a portal, a vortex of which you now have access to greater powers in your life. This is what the God of the Bible knows. This is why these days are so holy. This is why you are commanded. You see, you followed the rituals. You did all of the commandments that he told you to do, but you didn't know the science behind it. This is the science. This is the power that you have access to if you only use it. Okay, um, I wanted to give you guys a visual of the eight phases of the moon that you will see. And the reason that I want to give this visual is so that visual is so that you can see the importance of knowing what time of the month you are in. Because knowing the times of the month that you are in will help you take advantage of those opportunities, okay? And you can teach it to your children. This is actually a great assignment to teach your children. So I here have a diagram, I drew a diagram of the different eight cycles of the lunar phases, of the moon phases. What happens during one of the phases, which is what I spoke about, the new moon, which is when you set your intentions, at this time the, in, in the evening, it is dark. You don't see a moon, it disappears as I mentioned earlier, just like the sun disappears for over, almost three, over three days. So this is actually called a blackout. This is actually called the balsamic moon because it's so dark that you don't even see a sliver, even a portion of the light in the sky. And that is the phase of the moon, new moon. As we go up, the moon begins its waxing phase. Waxing means that as it waxes, it starts to increase in its light. It starts to take the light from the sun and starts to show it on the planet. But it does it slowly, so you only see increments of light reflected from the moon. 
As we go up in the waxing phase, the next phase from the new moon will be the waxing crescent. Crescent is what you see right here. It's a sliver. It's what the Israelites in the Bible, when they would, throw, they would blow the shofar because they saw this sliver, this wax, waxing crescent in the sky, and it indicated to them the periods that they were in. And they, in, in addition, they would see the waning crescent, and it would tell them when the new moon would begin, which would begin the new month for them. So as we go on with the waxing crescent, we move on to the first quarter of the moon phase. And in that first quarter of the moon phase, what you see here is the circle of the moon, almost as if it is cut in half. Part of the moon is reflecting the light of the sun and the other one is holding it back. It's concealing it. So we see it's cut in half. Half dark, half light. As we go up in our waxing phase, we, we, we come to the point of which most of the moon is reflecting its light and only a portion of a darkened crescent area is not. That is called the waxing gibbous phase. As we continue on after the waxing gibbous phase, we reach the point of the full moon. And this is the point of the full moon when we set our intentions in the new moon. This is when we reach our full pregnancy of all of the things that we decided to start here. All of the things, the businesses we decided to start, the education, the learning, the reading of learning a language, whatever it is that you put here, you will, you will reap the rewards here. You sow your seeds of intentions during the new moon, and in the full moon, when you are pregnant, it shows you it, it's visual, it has become full from all of the work that you put in it, the nourishment, the cultivation, and the seeds that you put in here every time you watered it, it put it in this moon and it grew bigger and bigger. So now this full moon is showing the full reflection of the sun down to the earth and it is a full moon. As we move on after the full moon, it reaches the waning process, which means that the sun, the moon is waning in its reflective properties of giving the earth its light again. It's going through it again. But except, as you notice, the crescents will now be on the other side because now we're seeing another part portion of the moon that is darkened, showing us the other south node or north node, depending on the nodes of the moon. So here, after you, you reap the harvest of all your intentions from the new moon, in the full moon, you're pregnant, you're ready to give birth to your child, now you will burst and deliver. And all of the things that you build up, you are now going to benefit and see the product of all, the, all of your intentions. It becomes visual to you now. It becomes real. All your dreams and intentions, you become so excited because you put everything in here. You, you, you nurtured your garden. You did everything. And now here you're pregnant and you see it, that it has just built itself up. And now it's just ready to come out. And the excitement is so exhilarating. It's so purposeful. And so now you are ready to deliver. And as you go down and your dreams and your vision start to become more um, down to earth, it becomes more visual for you, we reach the waning gibbous phase is what it's called. After the waning gibbous phase of which the light again, it's getting smaller and smaller, the third quarter, we, we reach the third quarter of the moon phase of which the moon looks again as if it is split in half, but instead of the light being on the south node or the north node, it's on the opposite side. So now we are seeing another perspective of what it is that we grew and nurtured and intended and gave birth to. We are seeing a new perspective and the other side of what we're doing. As we go down and the moon, the moon continues to wane, we reach the waning crescent phase. This is when we now look at what it is that we've done. We see the other side of the light. We see the other side of the node of the moon and the, and the other perspectives. And now we reflect on what we've learned from it all. 
What did you learn from all of the work you put into your business, into your career, into whatever it is you were doing to make extra money for your family? Whatever intentions you had now, in the waning crescent part, you start to ask yourself, what have I learned? You write it down. You keep notes of all of the things that you have built up and worked hard on, delivered, and now you're reflective. You're introspective. You're going inside and you're, 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 you're taking yourself through the stages of all your work. This is what the moon cycles do, what the phases do, the advantageous energies that you can now access if you understand what it looks like in the sky and exactly when to plant your seeds in different arenas, different avenues of the phases of the moon. Now we can see, guys, how all of this is significant because it is showing us the portals and the gateways and the vortexes to your self-empowerment. This is how you empower yourself. This is how you esteem the, the good in others, what they've achieved, what they've accomplished. Your self-esteem is so low because you're constantly admiring everyone else that, it has, that is here and you're down here when you could have esteem for yourself by self-empowering yourself, by learning the things, by the knowledge that was taken away from you, now taking it back. Learning why the God of the Bible felt that this was so important that he didn't give you the science behind it or the metaphysical reasons behind it. He only gave you the law and the command and the Torah. And he made you use all of this energy for him in his, in his verses and his scriptures where he tells you to go to the temple and make a sacrifice rededicate yourself, make an offering to him. You go there, all of you. In numbers, it, 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 the power increases. And you sit in the temple, just as he tells you in all of these scriptures that I wrote here. Numbers chapter 28, Numbers chapter 10, Ezekiel chapter 44, Second Chronicles. So now it's understood why, with all of these capabilities that you can manifest, from setting your intentions and using the power of the lunar cycles and the solar cycles as my other video showed you. By using those, now we can see the hidden intentions behind the God of the Bible, which my book unmasks and shows who he really is and why he usurps your power so that he can become more powerful, why he is a jealous God. Now we can understand why Numbers chapter 10, Numbers chapter 28, Ezekiel chapter 46, Acts 18, 2 Chronicles 2, Nehemiah 10, and on and on. So many scriptures that I couldn't write it here where he tells you during the new moon, during the full moon, even on your holy days, which have other significance, that he commands you to gather in the temples and set uh, and on the Sabbath days, and he commands you to pray, to make offerings to him, to make sacrifices to him. Because in all of this, he is taking the energies that you could have access to here. And now like a battery, you are just giving it away to him. And this is why he did not give you the science behind why these days in these verses of these scriptures are so important. Why are you commanded? Why are you punished if you do not observe some of these days? These are the reasons why. Because the less that you honor and worship him and pray to him and turn this into a religion of worship, the less that you do that, the less numbers that are involved in that, then the less energy that he receives for himself, of which he becomes all-powerful amongst all the other gods that my book brings out, that fight each other in the unseen realm. This is the science behind it. I hope to eventually go in more. You know, it's just amazing to me how even the words that are used in the Hebrew scriptures shed light on the purpose of all of this. How it is a time, the Kohadesh, according to the Bible, the new moon, 
It means the, 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 the verb of Kohadesh, when you break it down, means to renew, to reactivate, to, re, to begin again. So we go through cycles and periods over and over and over again with every new moon, every mo full moon, 12 months of the year, 13 new moons, 13 new moons a year, you have an opportunity to set your intentions. To, put the, to gain the power that you need to activate and actualize your self-empowerment 13 times a year, but instead you give it to him. This is what's going on here. This is a cycle, a regenerative cycle of power. It can either be yours or it can continue to be his. Stay tuned, I have more.